So I guess to start with, how many people have been running a, or are going to be running a semi-series combine? Okay. okay. This is a simulator fairly close to what the combine display is actually, or how it's actually operating in the combine. There's some things that are similar to this that work back on the 50 series or 60 series, and then some of the stuff even carries on into the S's. To start out with, you see my mouse yeah, right around there. Um, this is the armor at the board itself. Two things that are different between machines are one, this one here, you see it only has one and two on there. That's your, yeah, that means that it has a pro drive transmission. So these are um, speed, uh, range one and range two. And this one here also has four wheel drive on it, differential lock, so that must be a 9870. It has diff lock on it. And they have all kinds of things. We have the tilt for a side dome on it, so it must be a European machine, I believe, is the only one that's going to give us some kind of tilting system from here on it. So, just a couple things that the buttons mean. They, they have symbols that carry through pretty much the whole thing. Right here, you have your concave clearance, shows a cylinder with concave underneath it, even similar to the walking machines. Your cylinder speed or rotor speed, fan speed. And then a couple of things new to what we'd be having. Here you have your chaffer, and then here's your sieve. So we can adjust our sieve and chaffers from inside the cabin. This is our spreader speed on the back, so we can turn our spreaders up or down. This one here also is set up to run a 600 series draper header to where we can tilt the draper up and down, draper speed. Um, then this is our Float pressure, just the float pressure, then this is the control of our automatic and manual speeds on the header, the hover apps and stuff. Transport lock is something that you guys might see on an armrest display and wonder what in the world that is. It's a, something going underneath the bridge is what that actually is, somebody who informed me. Um, that's so when you're going down the road, you hit the button, then you're not able to run your unloading auger out or move your header up and down. So it's a safety to where nobody gets to messing around as you're driving up, paying attention. So that will light up, and like I said, then that locks you out of several hydraulic functions. So to navigate through this display, um, it is not a touch screen. It's somewhat awkward to navigate through once you get used to some of the quick links to go through. It's not too bad. So here you see this red button. That's what's highlighted. So that's the screen we're on. We're on page one of two. We hit the button directly above it. It'll take us to page two of two. Hit the button next to it, and now we have, we're on page one of four. So that's how we're gonna navigate through things. The simulator is fairly accurate. We're gonna get over here to our diagnostic button, and you see we only have page one of two. Actually on the machine, if you go out there now, you're gonna have page um, one of four. So you have four different pages. They've had a lot of infield diagnostics for you. But if you are in the, on your main run page and you want to navigate, um, you, you can't just click on the screen. You have to come over here to your scroll knob and you can say scroll this way and that, that just moves my, um, basically my cursor around for everything. And you can scroll the other way if you miss it. But if we want to go and change, like right now it says we're in corn. If you're just running the armrest display unit, it's all done down on the armrest display unit. And so you have to get to the right page to change what you're in right here. It says our farm field and crop. So we're gonna scroll through to our big box down here. And now I check mark. If you've ran an 1800 auto track display, a lot of it, a lot of it's really similar to that. So we're gonna scroll through because we're changing our crop and we'll check mark again. And normally they're not grayed out, but the simulator, that is one difference. But they do have winter wheat, spring wheat open. And we'll check mark it. And so now we can enter it off that page. So we have to scroll through, check mark to enter. And now we need to go to page four. It's still on corn here. So we have to scroll through, check mark. And this is one spot where people get into it and they're not sure how come it says corn on it. They want it to change. And our reasoning for changing it is we do have an automatic combine adjust to where we can have it have presets in there. I don't know how many of you guys have played with a preset on a 50 
their 60 series where they had the fork display on there. You could program in what your crop was doing and um, how you had all your adjustments. And then when you want to have it go through and automatically change the adjust because you knew three days ago you were in the spring week and these were your settings, you could have it automatically go back to that. So now if you look, we're winter wheat here, winter wheat here. We're still not quite done getting everything set for winter wheat because we're still showing corn here. So we'll go to our combine and we're going to go to the second page. The crop is still on corn. Scroll through there, check mark. Now all of this will be different if you have a 2600 display set up with it. It's going to um, automatically move some of this information up to the 2600 display. And so now we have our winter wheat as our um, crop that we're having. And this is the page where you can go in and you can set your presets. So the default for dry winter wheat is 800 on the cylinder speed, 15 concave clearance, cleaning fan 850, chapter 16, civet 6. Well, if we don't like that, we could go and we can change it. And then once we get them changed, we could save that. We come up here. There we go. Want to click on the thing. Go to new. And it's not going to let me go on. Okay, we won't do that then. Um, we'd be able to go in and um, pick a new one and then put our information in and then save it. And then you could go back to it. And when you go back, it would have that new information, custom one, two, or three lab labeled there. And you'd be able to click on custom two, let's say, or click on custom two. And then it will show you what you have for your set points. Engage your separator, engage your feeder house, go to full throttle, and then go to auto down here. And it will automatically go to those set points for that. Um, for custom one or two, whatever you pick. So th that enables you to keep the information intact. A lot of times people would keep a notebook of when we're in club week, this is what we had to set it for, but then we went to soft white and we had to change it. Now instead of keeping the notebook, you could keep it on here for a winter week um, or week difficult or spring week or whichever ones, and then customs underneath every one of those. Jim, have they ever come up with an idea, like if I own a machine and I'm switching machines, where I can kick that information over to the new machine? Not that old. Why not? <laughs> they probably didn't think about it. <laughs> no, um, I, I'm not sure. Well, um, you can do it with the 2600 and the 2630. Why don't they make a uh, thumb drive for these things to capture your information? Yeah, my guess is if you look at this 50 or the S series out here, you are able to save all that now. I have to check that. Don, you don't? Yeah, double check. Okay. Because I know now where we have that display as our primary display, it's going to be keeping some of that information there. But I, I don't know. It may be keeping some in another controller on the computer. Well, I'm, just, I'm just curious because if the computer ever goes out, however, your memory is very short term now. You're going to call it all what term? We'll get to start point. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you're saying. We'll do some more thing and play with that. Let me write it down. Yes, okay. So the other thing that you're going to need to know, um, it, it, that makes it easy to adjust that. But if you just want to change your cylinder speed a little bit, if you click on a button over here, there it shows where your cylinder speed is, then you can turn it up or you can turn it down and set it wherever you want, and it's going to adjust that. It's going to stay there. Um, here on the combine, if, if it doesn't reach that 470 before long, it will click up and say, set point not reached, and throw a yellow caution at you. Um, I don't know what it will do on the simulator here. If you wanted to. But um, after a few minutes, it will clear off of there, and, or after it reached it, and then you will go back to your regular display. Um, and then if you, let's say you want to adjust your chapter or sieve, that will pull it up and then you can open or close it from there. One thing about that, when you're making these adjustments on the go, it will open it and if it misses 17 when it's going to 17, it will go back down and close it and it will go back up and so it will fluctuate back and forth. So just be aware of that 
whenever you're making these adjustments, um, it may not be doing things on the back end that you would like to see. If you have to go hit auto as you're running through the field adjusting, what it does is it opens everything up all the way, speeds everything up, and then it slows it back down. It's doing that to keep things cleaned up, especially in the shoe and chaffer. Um, if things start to plug up, we need to get that cleaned out of there. And so you just need to be aware that if you're cutting deep, you're going to get a really dirty sample for a while in your bolt tank. And when we get back outside, we'll talk about um, how to go through some adjustments and stuff on that. Other things is that when we are on our combine page, um, we had our winter wheat in page two. This is our seed size and farm name if we want to change farm name and stuff. If you've ever played with the 1800 display, you know it takes a long time to write a full name out there. So a lot of fields are known as field one, two, and three, um, just because it's easy to do that. So you can change all that. It will keep track of that information, keep track of the the yield for that field, but not location, because at this point we don't have a receiver running on it. So we're just doing field documentation. If you had um, the old yield monitoring system, it had a data store part that you could get to where you could download the information for those fields. We could do something similar with this. Go to page three. This is where it's telling us what header we have hooked up to these newer combines. When we hook up the wiring harness, how the wiring harnesses are made on the combine, it knows what header it is. This thinks it has a draper header on it, and it's had a draper header on it for four hours. It doesn't mean, it, well, let's say it had 50 hours on it. It doesn't mean it only had one draper header for 50 hours. It might have had three draper headers for 50 hours. But altogether in its life, that's how much time it's been on a draper header. Um, minimum reel speed is something that people run into. When you're running your automatic reel speed, you commonly go over and you adjust your automatic reel speed, 9600s. Um, and early 50 series, it had a check spot on it where you set on checks at your minimum reel speed. That way, when you're going along, came to down, we can only slow down so much. Well, on these, we put our minimum reel speed in on page three or five for a combine. And so you can change it to where um, maybe when you come to down, we, you want to keep that reel really going, or you never want it to slow down beyond a certain point. So that's where you're changing. At the same time, um, Somebody may have turned it up on you, and now you're in there trying to make it slow down, and it won't. So here's a spot to go in and check it. Um, width and feet, if you're running auto track, here they put a 29 and a half foot header in there. Our spacing is what they're figuring our width. They're giving us some extra spacing. Um, change width and feet to where you could adjust it down to where you're not cutting a full section or full header. It will automatically adjust it down in five feet increments if you go to the display and have it shift or drop it down. One thing, if you're running a 2600 or 2630 display, it will do that all automatically. It has um, overlap control on it, so it knows where you've been in the field because you have your receiver on there. So it'll start cutting that header down, and I think we do it in 3.3 uh, foot section or widths on that. Um, Jim, where do they take the measurement? Do they take it from the outer shields, or should you do it from the outer shields? Or should you do it from the cutting section? Depending what header you have. If you have a 600 series header, if it says it's a 30 foot header, it's a 30 foot cut. Um, so you could go ahead and go 30 foot on that. Um, but if you have your auto track set for 29 and a half feet, you might kick it down a little bit here and just make things a little more accurate. But now if you have a um, 900 series rigid, if it's a 930, that means it's a 30 foot width, so it's actually only about a 29 foot cut. So um, you actually have to measure your header if you want to know truly what it is. Um, next thing on this page is record height, and that's what's going to turn your recording on and off for you. So when you bring your header up, um, it will turn off the header or turn off the recording. And then when you drop it down below that height, it will turn it back on for you so you don't have to worry about manually changing it. Um, moisture sensing, that's the other thing they have on them. This one here, currently the moisture alarm is turned off. So we're going to... It doesn't want to work for me right now. Normally we scroll through and turn the moisture alarm back on. Um, minimum moisture alarm. Commonly we do see it down at 5%. Just because we may be cutting it maybe 8%. And for the week, we normally don't care if it gets too dry. If you're out doing high moisture corn, then yeah, you're going to change it just that. Maximum, normally we're going to set that somewhere around 15 to 18, depending on 
what you're doing. Most of the guys here, nine, twelve percent is all the elevator is going to take, and so they want to know if they get into a patch that's going to be running 14 percent moisture, so that way they know to avoid it. Or if they are cutting out draws, go ahead and set that at 13. Um, because the other thing you have is sample rate, which it's either on the next page or not on the simulator. Because sample rate defaults to four times a minute. And if you know you're not in stuff that's really um, wet, change that to where you're only taking a sample every one or two times a minute. That way we're not running that plunger more than we have to. On some of those torpedo launcher um, sensors, they, they wear out. Um, it plug up easier, so that, that's why we just turn the sampling time down. Next page is if you're running Harvest Smart. Um, for those of you who don't know what Harvest Smart is, is it will run your speed up and down for you um, based on rotor pressure and losses out the back end of the machine. For the losses that I like to see out of the back end of these STS machines, we're not able to get it down as fine. Um, if you're okay with half a bushel loss per acre, then it's going to be okay. I do intend to play with it more this year because they've made some changes on it on, with the S's to know really if, if, to where we want it to be now. But you'd be able to set your target speed, your rotor pressure speed, your losses, and all that. That way it will speed it up and down for you. You don't have to run the hydro handle. But it's more of a reactive instead of a proactive system. It, it reacts after it sees the pressure in the rotor and it losses out the back end. Well, we might be through the draw already by then, so why slow down after we're through the draw? We need to slow down before the draw. So I don't have anybody out in this area using it. We do have quite a few combines with it because any combine with ProDrive has that option on it. Steve, you might have played with it a couple years ago. Uh, it's on, yeah, it's on the ProDrive combine. Yeah. Did you play with it much or? A little bit. You stay over it, compensate. Before you get to the coolie, override it, and then it'll take off when you get out of the coolie. Okay. That's so, yeah, if you operate it that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> as far as calibrations go, if you went to your fourth button and went to calibrations, if simulator worked and everything right right now, we can scroll down here to calibrations so we can see different calibrations. One calibration we did not talk about outside was Sid and Chaffer, um, the newer combines where you can adjust from inside, we want to make sure that when it says five on our display, that it's five millimeters on the back. We don't want it to be one side to be five millimeters, the other side eight millimeters. We've had some or some chaffers come in like that, and so when we or some sibs come in like that. So when we're trying to normally run at five, and half of it's open to eight, right there is a big problem for trying to get a good clean sample. Um, that difference right there on your white caps, um, Jeff, that's one of the first things that we'll check. Well, I know we checked it on your machine when it was down there. So, um, but we like to make sure that's set right. And our sieve and chaffer, our concave then, is calibrated right. And that was all Paul, part of what Paul did outside, is he ran through it. And when he's done, he'd go back into the display and the combine, and he would adjust that where it read zero. As far as the 50 series and 60 series combines, it's armrest. Uh, a lot of it's the same, except instead of having that armrest display unit showing everything, it's all up on the corner post on the side. So, any questions on that? Just kind of a quick run through of the display. Okay. Like I said, the S series combines, it's all on the um, 2630 or the, the smaller display, but it can be a touch screen option that they have on there. On a T670 out there, I believe that's a touch screen on that one too. But that's going to be similar to um, what they have on the S series software with the AT. Um, a couple things we'll talk about before we go back out. No, I'll talk about it outside. We'll talk about the hydro handle. Any other questions? Small in here? enough to know you, large enough to serve you. Your locally owned John Deere dealer, Evergreen Implement.